Hello there, my name is Michael Maynard and welcome back to Gorilla Picking. Now, this episode is the next in my series on the Group 2 Safe Locks. What we are going to be doing today is having a look at the wheel pack. That is this little element here and this gentleman is the beating heart of our Group 2 Safe Lock. Now, um, just to recap for about two seconds, we know that what happens here is that the dial transmits rotational energy through the spindle. The spindle is attached to the cam and the cam is the only part of the lock that is attached to the outside of the lock. So there's a spline key that holds these two elements together. When one moves, the other moves as well. Now, energy is then transferred by the little drive pin on the back of the cam. That's this thing right here. So why don't I give you a closer up view of that. Um, that little drive pin there rotates. As it does so, it connects with the flies which are here. And we are going to talk about the flies in great detail in a second. Um, and that in turn is what turns the wheels. When we get the gates of the wheels all lined up in the right place, um, the fence can drop in and our lock is open. So what we are going to talk about now are the components in this little stack of metal. And uh, I'll be back in two seconds and we'll show you what those components look like. Okay, so here we go guys. Um, there are three wheels and you knew that because there are three wheels, uh, three numbers to the combination. So um, the wheels are stacked up one on top of each other and as I am sure you have worked out by now, um, the wheel number three is the one that is closest to the cam. It's the one that's on the, on the top of the stack then wheel two and then wheel one. And the reason for that, very obviously, is that when you are dialing the combination, the cam interacts with wheel three first, it dials that one first, then it picks up wheel two, then it picks up wheel one. So when you've rotated your dial round four times to the left or whatever, you are at that point dialing this one round to the place where it needs to be. Then you start dialing the other way again, and the cam picks up wheel three, then it's dialing wheel two, and then you get that one set, and then finally, the last and final one that gets set is wheel three, which of course is closest to the cam. All right, so much so simple. Now, what we're gonna talk about next is these little movable flies, these little, little ring things. So on the back of the wheels, there is a little fixed drive pin. Now those are analogous to the fixed drive pin on the cam. They do exactly the same job. Um, so if those are fixed, then why the hell are these flies movable? So um, I'm gonna zoom in on one of these next. Give me two seconds. Okay, so we've now got our little, uh, little wheel in place, okay, and Here's our drive pin. It's round, it's beautifully machined, and it's got that little pin sticking up there to receive the uh, drive pin on the back of the cam. And it sits in a little slot. It's in its little groove, just like that. Now, it has got a very specific range of travel. So it can go this far in this direction, and then it stops. It can go this far in that direction and then it stops. Now, why the hell would we do that? Why do we not just have that dead fixed? And the answer when you think about it is ridiculously simple. Um, we are gonna be de dialing this dial both clockwise and anti-clockwise. Now, what we wanna make sure is that the gate stops at the same position whether or not we are dialing clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now, if this was fixed, when we dialed the dial, let's say to 10 for argument's sake, clockwise, the gate might stop there. But when we dialed it from the other direction, the dial might stop on 10, let's say, but the gate at that point would be off to one side by the width of whatever this fly is, all right? 
So you'd come at the same number from two different directions and you'd get the gate in two different positions. Now the movable fly gets round that problem. So what happens is the drive cam comes round, hits there, the, the fly starts moving and then we start moving to the position we want it and when we're going back the other way it moves it back out of the way, back round to there and then away we go and we get to the same place again. A very, very elegant solution to a very, very obvious problem. Now the original, the early safe locks didn't have this. Um, they weren't well enough machined, they didn't have the, the equipment to be able to manufacture these things accurately enough. And for that reason they were a little bit harder to use. Now there is one downside. And the downside is that this adds an extra component, an extra element of, of things to go wrong. And not an unusual fault is for a lockout to occur because either the dial, uh, the, the little fly has been snapped off altogether or it's got stuck. So imagine if you've used a poor quality lubricant in here, it goes tacking after a while and um, it, it gets stuck there or you do some mechanical damage by being heavy handed with the, uh, with the dial. Um, it can get stuck in one place and then the lock is going to behave like a fixed pin dial and you're going to dial your combination and the thing won't open. So what a safe technician, a safe engineer has to do is look at the symptoms of that, work backwards from it and work out how to fix that. Alright, so you have seen the drive pin on the cam. You have seen the movable fly on the front of the wheels. You have seen the fixed drive pin on the back of the wheels which in turn of course drives the fly on the, on the next wheel in, in the stack. Um, the next thing that we need to talk about is all the stuff that we can see inside the wheel. What the hell are all these bits about and what's this little hole about? Back in a second. Righto folks, well the next thing we need to do is talk about what I think is one of the coolest features of a, uh, well any safe lock really, but a group two in particular. We're going to talk about how you change the combination. Now I know you guys have been dying to find out about this because I've had a shitload of messages about it. Um, now have a think about the combination guys. Um, there are three numbers in the combination. Any one of those numbers can be from 0 to 100 or in actual fact from 1 to 99 more accurately speaking. Um, with one or two exceptions because there are forbidden zones and stuff that we can't use. But the bottom line is each number has got to be between 0 and 99. Now how exactly are you going to do that? And um, I, I guess the obvious way to do it is to have a hundred different wheels um, each with their little uh, cut out here, the little gate in a very slightly different place. So the uh, one wheel might look like this, um, the 25 wheel might look like that, the 50 might look like that and so on. So you could well have um, a large number of wheels which you pick and choose from and you build up your, your lock. That would be kind of the, the same as how you pin up a pin tumbler lock. So if you want a long pin you use a long pin, if you want a short pin you use a short pin and um, the system isn't adjustable. However, the people that make combination locks are a little bit smarter than that. And if you have a look at this thing carefully, you will see that it isn't just one hunk of metal. In fact, it is lots of hunks of metal. There is a boss here in the middle, so there's a brass boss in the middle. There is a steel plate here, and if we look pretty closely, there's actually the same steel plate on the other side. So there's actually a bit of a sandwich going on here with the little boss in, in the middle. And then as well as that, there are some little metal things in here for some reason. And if you look very closely, you'd actually see that there are some little teeth that you can see. That might not show up very well on the video, but trust me when I tell you, you can see some little teeth um, round in, in these little cutouts here as well. 
So what on earth is going on? Well, what's going on here is almost the coolest mechanical thing that I've ever seen. What you are able to do, and here it comes guys, listen closely, you are able to decouple the bit of the wheel that holds the gate from the bit of the wheel that knows where it is. So remember, this is the bit that's getting driven by the fly. So this is the bit that's getting driven by the wheel and is, is telling you where it is on the dial. And this bit here is the bit that knows where to open the lock. Now at the moment, those two things are fixed in relation to each other, but would you just look what happens when I put a thing called a change key in here and I rotate that change key 90 degrees. So here's my key. I have rotated that 90 degrees and you heard something go click there, didn't you? Right, now watch this. We can move that bit with respect to the middle bit. What we are now doing is changing the combination. We are changing the orientation of that with respect to that. Now, because these are spares and um, don't belong in any particular lock, I could put this anywhere I like, doesn't matter. Um, once I've decided where I want it though, I get back in here with my change key again, and I rotate this little locking clutch a quarter of a turn. Those elements are now fused together again, and that has now just got a new combination. Is that not cool, guys? Now I'm just going to zoom out, and um, the rest of the changing mechanism is stupidly simple. Um, when you think about this, you have all three of these things lined up together in the lock. You get them into the right place, and I will do a separate video on this later on, okay? I'm going to do a video on the actual mechanics of changing the combination. But you get them all in the right place, you put the change key through all three of them, uncouple the things, dial them up to the new combination, and away you go. Guys, I wish I was the guy that thought of that system. <laughs> I really, really do. So there you have it, gents. We have gone over the wheel pack. We have gone over what comprises the wheels, how the motion is taken from the cam to wheel three, to wheel two, to wheel one. We've got the movable flies that sit there so that we get the right number, whether we come at it clockwise or anti-clockwise. And finally, we have got the clutch system inside here that decouples the boss from the outer portion which holds the gates. There you go, gents. My name is Michael Maynard, and this is Gorilla Picking.